The 2020 edition of the Academic Ranking of World Universities, the ARWU, or Shanghai Rankings, have just been published, and you won't find a lot of surprises looking at the top 10. They are the usual suspects, all uh, big U.S. universities, plus Cambridge and Oxford representing the U.K. And in general, the U.S. and U.K. do dominate the rankings. So if we go through it, you will see lots of American universities. If we were to do a search, we can get a list of the United States universities, and you'll see in the top 100, there are, oh, there's my old employer, University of Pittsburgh. There are 41 American universities out of the top 100 in the rankings. And not surprisingly, the United Kingdom comes in second with, well, if we go down the list here, eight UK universities in the top 100. The surprising thing, though, is that Australia does especially well on these rankings. And there you have seven Australian universities in the top 100. That is the group of eight Australian universities minus Adelaide. University of Adelaide has actually fallen in this year's rankings down from the 100 to 150 range into the 151 to 200 range. The other group of eight Australian universities are all in the global top 100. And that's a bit surprising for a relatively small country of 25 million people to be nearly matching the United Kingdom and you know, way ahead of educational powerhouses like Germany, Japan, China, you know, France, the rest of the world. Even Canada doesn't come close to Australia. Canada, despite being larger than Australia, still having you know, the English language bias in its favor only has four universities in the global top 100. The Shanghai rankings uh, are produced by the Shanghai Ranking Consultancy, which is a commercial spin-off of the uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong University's uh, Center for Global University Rankings. The Shanghai Rankings Consultancy adopted the SJTU, the Shanghai Jiao Tong University methodology, when it was spun off into this commercial entity. And this method for ranking universities is essentially the Chinese vision of what a university should be. In fact, the ARWU rankings were originally designed because China, in around the year 2000, wanted to see its C9 universities, the top nine Chinese universities, rise into the global top 100. And they had the problem what are the global top 100? <laughs> there was no list. And so they made their own list. And what did they prioritize? Well, quality of teaching, only if your alumni win Nobel Prizes and Fields Medals. Fields Medals are effectively the Nobel Prize for mathematics. Uh, look in the fine print, and that's Nobel Prizes, except for peace or literature. The science prizes are fine. Economics is OK. Um, no peace, no literature. The quality of the faculty at a university, again, getting science Nobel Prizes and Fields Medals, or highly cited researchers, we'll get back to that in a minute. Research output, nature and science, only those two top scientific journals, and papers indexed in the Social Science Citation Index and Science Citation Index, which are um, a group of usually the more cited academic journals, although there are some anomalies in that. And there's a per capita adjustment to make sure that small institutions don't get swamped out of the rankings. Now, I'd like to focus on one in particular, the highly cited researcher list, because obviously there's not much you can do to get Nobel Prizes. I mean, either you've got Nobel Prize winners or you don't, and you're not going to be able to buy them very easily on the uh, open market. Publications in Nature, Science, and uh, you know, highly cited uh, indices, those require a lot of management effort. You really have to work hard to get those papers. And in my experience working at universities, university managers are not very, let's say, interested in improving their management to get people publishing in higher prestige outlets. What you can do, however, is buy in highly cited researchers. And if we were to take a look at the highly cited researcher list, that's produced by Clarivate which it used to be Thomson Reuters, it's now an independent company. And Clarivate will tell you there are some 6,216 highly cited researchers in the world by their method. And where are they located? Well, Australia, 
for a very small country has 4.4 percent of them which is an enormous concentration it's so enormous that Clarivate even notes that Australia continues to impress the number of researchers recognized as highly cited is more than tripled in six years, which is pretty amazing, though part of that's a change in methodology. Australian research institutions appear to have recruited a significant number of highly cited researchers since 2014. And we can see that in the Australian stats if we go to my own new paper on the rankings. And if we look at the highly cited researcher list, I'm going to go here. This takes the years for which I was able to get data, 2004, 2007, and the more recent years. There are several methodology changes. But throughout the methodology changes, you can look at Australia's percentage of highly cited researchers. It used to be a little more modest, down below 2% or so. And since 2014, with the massive recruitment of Chinese students into Australia, it has boomed until now we're at the point where 4.36%, more than double the percentage of highly cited researchers uh, are Australia-based as used to be. The paper, if you'd like to see it, you can find it on my website. It is called How Rankings Obsession Drove the Group of Eight's Chinese Student Binge. And it is about how Australia's group of eight universities have risen up the ARWU rankings, primarily by recruiting Chinese students and feeding those that Chinese student tuition money into buying up highly cited researchers. And if you want to see that Chinese student binge, you can see there are five Australian universities that have really binged on international and Chinese students. That's uh, Monash, University of Melbourne, University of Sydney, University of Queensland, and uh, the uh, University of New South Wales and University of Queensland. And not surprisingly, these are the five Australian universities that have really zoomed up the rankings. The Australian National University, which used to be the top ranked Australian university on the ARWU when it first started back in 2003, has dropped, dropped, dropped because it has not had the money to compete with Melbourne and Queensland, which have recruited enormous numbers of Chinese students and poured the money back into buying up highly cited researchers. Now, something you may notice about the ARWU ranking, books, not counted. Humanities, not counted. Social sciences, well, modestly counted. The highly cited researchers list does include social scientists, but of the 160-something highly cited researchers at Group of Eight Universities, only four are social scientists, and those four include one physicist, who got credited for economics, and three uh, epidemiologists who got credited in public health, which by some accounts is a social science. So the ARWU take it or leave it, it is effectively China's rankings. Uh, China set the goal for its universities to succeed on these metrics, and China has succeeded. China now is nipping at Australia's heels with six universities in the global top 100 on their own rankings. And of those six universities, I believe five are in the uh, C9 universities. I don't believe uh, University of Science and Technology of China is. These six universities have climbed the rankings. Now, China this year said it wanted its universities to stop, stop pursuing success in the English speaking world and instead focus on indigenous research. What that means is the ARWU is likely to become less important for Chinese universities as China shifts its ambitions and says it doesn't want its researchers you know, seeking to publish in science and nature. They want their researchers to publish in Chinese journals. So this is all in flux. The irony is Western universities and in particular Australian universities are pulling out all the stops to succeed in these rankings, even though China itself is abandoning them. Now, we'll see how well those Australian universities do post-coronavirus. Uh, they have only got into this fantastic position in the rankings uh, by pouring Chinese student money back into uh, hiring highly cited researchers. It's the only lever that's really pullable, and the group of eight universities have all seen huge increases in their scores on highly cited researchers. You can actually get the subscores here uh, 
by pulling down and you'll see that the Australian universities actually score very high there. If we were to look at all, if you look at Melbourne, for example, University of Melbourne is down here in the 30s. And you'll see that compared to other universities in its range, it has a fantastic score on highly cited researchers because that's how it has pulled itself up into this uh, area in the ranking. Those Australian universities are likely to fall down the rankings, not in 2021, because the 2021 rankings will be based on the current highly cited research accounts at these universities, but probably in 2022, when Australia has to start letting people go due to budget cuts, we'll see what happens to their rankings on the RWU. Uh, that's about it for the RWU rankings. 2020 is now out. Have a look, and I hope this enlightened you a little bit about what's going on. To find my own report on this, just go to salvatorbavonis.com, Google Salvatore Bavonis, it should pop right up, and you will see leading the page my report, How Rankings Obsession Drove the Group of Eights Chinese Student Binge.